So what we are going to discuss, what is inheritance, how to implement inheritance in CSR, why child class cannot consume the parent class private members, right? We'll see different examples to understand inheritance concept, why parent class constructor should be accessible to the child class, what is a reference in CSR, who is the default parent class of all the classes in .NET framework, what is the constructor execution flow in inheritance, how to pass dynamic value to parent class constructor, and finally, we will discuss the advantages of inheritance. All these 10 points we are going to cover in detail, right? Right. What is inheritance? So it's a mechanism of consuming the parent class member under the child class, right? Suppose you created one class called A. And in class A, you have defined some members. Whenever I'm saying members means it might be some variable, it might be some properties, it might be some methods right and if you want to consume those member inside the child class or you can say if you want those members inside in class b then how you can do suppose you are having a class a in class a you define some method and you want the same method in class b how you can do this you can copy the content from class a and you can paste it in class b this is one of the way right but if you are doing the copy pasting kind of things then it is not reusing, rather it is rewriting, right? You have written the code in class A, again you have written writing the same code in class B. Even if the same code is needed in two more classes, then again you are going to rewrite the same code in two more places. So this is nothing but your code rewriting. So code rewriting is bad from performance point of view. It is not only degrade your application performance, it will also increase the code size of your application. Right. Suppose you have written 15 line of code in class A, the same 15 line of code in class B, same 15 line of code in class X, Y, Z, the same 15 line of code in class A, B, C. That means 15 line code is the logic, but I am writing the same logic at four different places. That means the number of code is going to be 60, 60 line. Right. And even tomorrow I need to do some changes. Then again, I'm going to do the changes in all the four places or not. That means this is a and this is the disadvantage, right? If you want the same logic, if you want the same function, right? Some members, same thing in different classes, instead of rewriting, we should go for a reusing, right? If you want to reuse one class member in another class, then what we need? We need a relationship. We need a relation. What relation we need? We need parent-child relation. So while so once we establish the parent-child relationship, then the child can consume all the member of its parent, right? So in this case, you can see this is class A, this class A having some member, and I want to consume those class member inside the class B. And if I want to consume the parent class or class A member in class B, then I need to make a relationship, right? What relationship? Parent-child relationship. The class A should become a parent of class B or class B should become the child of class A. So once class A become the parent of class B or once class B become the child of class A, then the child class can consume the, all the member of the class A, right? So this is nothing but inheritance relationship, right? You understood or not? Yes or no, what is inheritance? Yes, sir. Okay, so generally see what why why if we are making the parental relationship, why the child can consume all the member of a parent, right? This is a law, right? Generally, we all know that all of our parent properties belong to us or not. So the children get rights on the parent property. Why? Because this is a law. According to the law, all the properties of a parent belonging to their children only. So this is your parent and you are the children of your parent. So whatever property your parent have, according to the law, all these properties are going to be your property, right? So this is by the law. And the same law is also applicable in our programming principle. Suppose I have a class A with set of members and I want same members in other class. One way to do is I need to copy paste the same code from class A into class B, right? But if we copy paste the code, then it is called rewriting the code. Rewriting the code has impact on the size of the application. If the size of the application grows, ultimately it will affect the performance of the application, right? So you have to overcome the rewriting process and you need to use 
the reusing process. The best option that is available for reusing in Shisha is inheritance. And inheritance is one of the fundamental OOPS principle. And by using this inheritance principle, we can reuse the parent class member under the child class by establishing a parent-child relationship. What we need to do? We need to establish a relationship between the two classes. What relation? Parent-child relation. Once you establish the parent-child relationship, then all the member of a parent class, that is class A, can be consumed under the child class, right? You can look at this diagram. Parent class member consumed in the child class. How it is consuming? Because by establishing the parent-child relationship. And once you establish the parent-child relationship, then the child class can consume all the parent class member except the private member. Private member, the child cannot consume. Why the private member, the child cannot consume? That we will discuss. Right. Then the question is that, yes, we understand this. If we want to consume the parent class member under the child class, then we need to make the parent child relationship or we need to in, uh, we need to implement the parent child relationship. Then the question is how to implement inheritance or how to implement the parent child relationship, right? To implement inheritance, we need to establish the parent child relationship between the two classes. See how we can implement. Please see this diagram. Suppose this is class A. This class A having some members, right? And if you want to establish the parent-child relationship, then what is the syntax? The syntax is your class name, right? Your class name, your child class name. Then you would need to write the colon. Then you need to write the parent class name like this. Suppose this is A, your parent class. This B is your child class. Then you need to write the colon and then you need to write the parent class name. And once you write this, this will establish the parent-child relationship. Here A will become the parent class and B will become the child class. Once you make the parent-child relationship, then the child class, your the child class is B, can consume the parent class member. Right? So, so whenever I'm uh, uh, going further, I'm going to use some of the terminology. So I can use parent class, I can use base class, I can use super class, all are meaning same. Right. If you use the term parent, if you use the term base, or if you use the term super, meaning all are going to be same. Similarly, you can use child, you can use derived, you can use subclasses, or meaning is going to be same. And how you can implement parent-child relationship by using this syntax. This is nothing but your child class colon parent class name. Once once you make this inheritance, then all the parent class member you can consume under the child class. Is that clear? Yes. yes. The how it is possible that the child class can consume members of its parent class as it is the owner of those members, right? So now the child class can consume the member of the parent class and he will think that I am the owner of all these things, right? The same thing. If your parents have some properties, then the child can say, nah, all these properties are only mine. So I am the owner of all these properties. So in this way, the child can consume the parent class properties except the private member. Right, the child class can consume all the members of the parent except the private member. Now the question is, why child class cannot consume the private members? Yes, generally children have rights on their parent property. As a children, tomorrow you can take over your parents' business. You can take uh, take over your parents' properties like car, flats, building, money, whatever your parent have, you can take. But you cannot take over your parents' job. You cannot take your father's job. The reason is the job, whatever your father is doing, may be based on his experience, may be based on uh, based on his qualification, right? Uh, and tomorrow you cannot take over uh, your parents' job, na? Suppose your parent uh, parent is a teacher, but you are a, but uh, you cannot take your parents' job, na? You cannot go tomorrow and you can start teaching. That is not possible because that job, what your parent is doing, that based on his qualification that based on his experience, right? And, do, and that job is uh, private to your parents. So you can take whatever your parents have, but you cannot check the private thing which your parents have, right? So the job is completely private to your father, right? And that is not inherited to you. But the remaining everything, whatever business, whatever money, properties, whatever you can take, but parent having some private member, private things, means that you cannot take over. So the simple 
the same principle is also applied in inheritance the child can consume all the members of the parent except the private is that clear guys yes sir why you cannot inherit the uh, uh, private members because private means private na private means that uh, already we have discussed in our access specifier session right if you declare something as private then that is only accessible within the same class you cannot access the private member from outside the class from outside the derived classes non derived classes in the same assembly derived classes non derived classes in a different assembly you cannot access it private member you can access only within the same class why because it is private to the class right the same thing whatever your parents have if something is private then the parents can use only those things right you cannot use the uh, private things of your parent other thing you can use it the same principle is also applied in inheritance right now let us understand some of the examples to understand suppose i am having this class you can see this is a class a and this class having two methods right one is method 1 and in method 2 now now you want the same two functionalities now you want this method 1 method 2 in another class let's say class b then one of the way to do is copy paste you can copy these two things and you can paste it in the class b so this is another this is one of the way to do this but what is the problem this is not called reusability if you are copying the code from class a and pasting in class b then this is not called reusability what is this is code rewriting if you are doing the code rewriting then it will degrade your application performance it will increase the code it will increase the size of your application once your application size is increases ultimately your application will be slower right and the second problem is that if you want to do some changes then you need to figure out what are the classes where i have written the same logic right then i have to go to the all the places then i have to do the changes that is also going to be error prone right so we should not go with code rewriting what we need to do we need to go for code reuse how we can reuse the code simply like this we have already this is your child class you need to make the inheritance relationship by using this colon operator right and once you make the parent child relationship then you can consume the parent class member under the child classes let's see this practically right this is your class okay this is your, your class a and this is your class b right so you can see now you can see this parent class or class a having two methods i'm not redefining the rewriting or redefining those method in class b instead i'm making the parent child relationship right you can see uh, here class b is inheriting from class a so that means here we are establishing the parent child relationship between two classes in this case class a is going to be your parent class and b is going to be your child class and you can see from the child uh, from the main method i am creating an instance of child class and then consuming the parent class method, right so in this case if you run this application then you will see that the two methods which are defined inside the parent class is going to be executed right so by using the child class instance we are consuming the parent class method see output so method 1 and method 2 right so this is how you can establish parent child relationship in c sharp right so and one more thing uh, let, let us add so, so what i'm showing now if you look at this opj dot so you can see this is method 1 or method 2 or showing or not but if you look at the definition it is still showing this method belongs to which class a class right this method is belongs to a class this method is belongs to a class a class now now what i'm going to do i am writing a, a new method inside class b right so i'm putting this method name as method 3 
right? So now, now if you look at this method, which class it is showing? B class. Right. So what it means that we need to understand, right? Right. So observe the following image, right? Please observe this image. You are creating an instance of OPJ, and whenever you are using uh, checking the method signature, it is showing a dot method. What it means? It means the child class can consume the member of the parent class as it is the owner. Now, if you see the description of either method A or method, sorry, method one or method two, it is showing void a dot method one and void a dot method two. That means the method one or method two belongs to class A only, but class B can consume the member as it is the owner. See, you can drive your father's car, na, but the registration number or registration name <laughs> is your father. Who is laughing? Oh, sorry, sorry. It's me, my brother. Okay, that's fine. Okay, see, so the point that you need to remember, you are consuming the child class, uh, uh, as a child class, you can consume your parent class member, right? Suppose your father's buy a car. The registration number is only in your father's name, but you are consuming the car. You are thinking that you are the owner of the car, but actual owner who is? Who is the actual owner of the car? Your parents only. The same thing. Using the child class, you can consume the method one and method two. You are thinking that you are the owner, but actual owner, who is the actual owner? The parent is the actual owner. So you can see this method. You can see a dot method one. Because you are consuming, you are thinking that you are the owner, but actual owner is the parent class, right? But if you define any method, right? Like the way, suppose you define this method three, in this case, you can see method three, which belongs to the child class only. You got, got my point or not? So whatever member you defined inside the parent class and whatever the member you defined inside the child class, you can consume all those members inside the child class. But the owner, owner means who actually own this method? Who actually own this car? You only own this car or your parent own this car? You can buy a car, you can drive it. Your parent can buy, your parent buy a car. Your parent can use that car. Even you as a child of your parent, you can also use that car. If you if you use your parent's car, you can think that I am the owner of this car. But the actual registration name is nothing but your parents, right? The actual owner of the car, the parent's car is your parents, not you. You, you can you can consume, but the actual owner is your parents. You can think that you can you are the owner, but the actual owner is your parent. That is what I'm showing. This method and method two are belong to the parent class only. The actual owner is the parent class, but you can consume them by thinking that you are the owner of the method. And whatever you define inside your class, you are the actual owner. So you can see B is nothing but your actual owner, right? So now, now the question is that in this example, right, how many methods are there in class B? Can anybody tell me? Only one. Sorry? B. We are defining method three only in class B, no? And class A has two methods, method one and method two. Yes. So this class B have three methods. So the same question, right? The answer is three. See, all the properties what your father has given to you, plus all the properties what you earn is nothing but your whole property, na? You understand my point or not? Whatever property yes, given by your father to you and whatever the property you earn, it's nothing but whole is your property only. So in this case, whatever your parent, whatever your parents is given to you, two properties, two methods. Whatever property you earn means you have one method. So total number of to, to whole property of you means your parents' property plus your property. So in this case, total how many methods you can access using B means three methods. So B class, you can see three methods are available. Right? 